Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there is John Lewandowski. How you doing, John? Tired, but good. Yes, I can't wait to have all these days off this week. <laughs> to prepare for the uh, madness that is Saturday. We got a lot going on Saturday. <laughs> Next week, a week from today. Um... But let's get into it. First up is the Milwaukee Admirals versus the Texas Stars. Uh, second part of a back-to-back -back there. Um, before the game, uh, Pouliot was suspended for one game for uh, game misconduct in the final five minutes. Um, I kind of called that during our show that that was going to happen. I, I It's an automatic almost. Yeah. Um. But, all right, let's get into it. All right, so the Milwaukee Admirals took on the Texas Stars today. Shots on goal in the first period. Milwaukee outshoots Texas 8-6. to six. In the second period, Milwaukee outshoots Texas 14-12. to 12. In the third period, both teams had eight shots. Uh, Milwaukee in overtime had two shots. Texas, none. And in total, Milwaukee outshoots Texas 32 to 26. Now on the power play, Milwaukee goes one for three with two minutes, one infraction, while Texas goes 0 for one with six minutes, three infractions. All righty. Scoring of the first was Logan Stankoven. Uh, he has his eighth with an assist from Antonio Strangis, his fifth, and Alex Petrovic, his third. I, how Petrovic's still in the A is beyond me, but that's beside the point. Um, so that was at the 254 mark. Then at the 1217 mark, Dennis Kiryanov scores his third with an assist from Navra and Mutter, his second. Mutter's been on kind of a point streak himself. Yeah, he has. All right. In the second period at the 701 mark, the Admirals get on the board from Fedor Svechkov. Scoring his third of the year, assisted by Adam Willsby, his first, and Ty Felliver, his second. At the 1338 mark, Texas gets on the board from Christian Cairo, scoring his first of the year, assisted by Frederick Carlstrom, his fourth, and Oscar Beck, his seventh. His then first the, pro goal. First pro goal, okay. Then at the 1921 mark, the Admirals get on the board with a goal from Zachary LaRue. Scoring his third of the year, assisted by Cal O'Reilly, his second, and Kevin Graval, his second. Then Nicholas Camano scores his fourth with an assist from Riley Didimani, his fourth, and Gavin White, his first. Uh, then Ty Palliver scores his third with an assist from Jankowski, his seventh, and Kevin Wall, his first. I believe that to be Wall's first pro. Point as well. That was on the power play at the 1033 mark. And to correct that, I am correct. So that is his first pro point. Congratulations. Um, then we got into a little bit of penalty trouble at, towards the end of that third period. Um, we killed the penalty, but uh, they sustained pressure after that, pulled the goaltender and tied it up with Maverick Mork scoring his sixth with an assist from Curtis McKenzie, his 11th, and Mateo Blubble, his seventh. Um, then in overtime, King Kemmel, Joachim Kemmel, he scores his third with an assist from LaRue. LaRue has two point had two points in this game. Uh Falber had two points in this game as well. Your three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Ty Falber with a goal and an assist. Second star of the game was Maverick Mork with a goal. First star of the game was Joachim Kemmel with the game winner. In for the Milwaukee Admirals was Troy Grosnick, stopping 22 or 26, allowing four in 62 minutes, 33 seconds work. In net for the Texas Stars, no, um, we're no stranger to this guy, Remy Poirier. Remy Poirier okay. stopped 27 of 32 with five goals against in 61 minutes, uh, 59 seconds will work. Well, we'll just say 52 seconds, 52 minutes, or 62 minutes. Ah! <laughs> I can't talk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, let's go over the standings after this because a bit of a shake on this one. 
Uh, we came in at uh, sixth place, uh, three-way tie for uh, for kind of like anywhere between fifth and sixth. Um, uh, starting it off is the Texas Stars of the Central Division with uh, six wins, three losses, th two overtime losses, and one shootout loss at 15 points. Uh, the Iowa Wild have 13 points with six wins, five losses, one overtime loss. Uh, Rockford has five wins in regulation, four wins or four losses in regulation. They have 10 points. The Admirals are five and five at a 10 with 10 games played with 10 points. They are at 500. The Grand Rapids Griffins are three and five or three, five, one and one with eight points. Uh, the Manitoba Moose are four and four with eight games played. And the Chicago Wolves are one, six, one and one with four points. With a win percentage of 22.2. I'll take the 50%. All righty. So, still a lot of hockey to be played. Yeah. Um, Iowa did beat the Wolves today. Uh, four to nothing. Keith Kincaid was in net for them and gave up four goals on 20 shots. Yikes. Matt Donovan was the uh, pylon for the game. Uh, he gave up three, uh, minus three on the stat line for that game. Um, on to our next game of our coverage is the Arizona Coyotes versus the Nashville Predators. All right, so shots on goal per period in the first period, Nashville outshoots Arizona 18 to 11. In the second period, Nashville outshoots Arizona 10 to 6. In the third period, Nashville outshoots Arizona 14 to 8. And in total, Nashville outshoots Arizona 42 to 25. Now, in the faceoff circle, Arizona was better by a little bit at 52.9% to Nashville's 47.1%. On the power play, Arizona goes two for four with eight penalty minutes, while Nashville goes one for four with eight penalty minutes. Nashville out hit Arizona 24 to 20, and Arizona out blocks Nashville 16 to 11. All right, scoring in the first at the 513 mark was Kiefer Sherwood with an assist from uh, Luca Vangelista, his eighth assist, and Novak his fifth. That was uh, Sherwood's fourth. Then at the 711 mark, now I want to slush me. Um, his Forsberg gets his fifth with an assist from Dyquist, his sixth, and Lazard his first. Uh, Michael Crocone scores his fifth with an assist from uh, Logan Cooley, his eighth. And that was a wrist shot at the 9.58 mark. Then at the 14.05 mark, uh, Troy Stecker scores after getting out of the penalty box with an assist from Moser, his fourth. Then Dante Favreau scores his second with an assist from Yossi, his seventh, and Forsberg, his 11th. That is a score of 3-2 to two to end the first period. All right, in the second period, uh, O'Reilly gets on the board with his eighth of the year at the 328 mark, assisted by Novak, his sixth, and Yossi, his eighth. That was on the power play. Then at the 719 mark, Keller for Arizona gets on the board with his sixth of the year, assisted by Cooley, his ninth, and Dursey, his fifth. That was on the power play. Then at the 12-28 mark for Arizona, Kerfoot gets on the board with his first of the season, assisted by Boyd, his fourth, and Dumba, his first. That was a tip-in. Then at the 1907 mark for Arizona, Carcon gets his sixth of the year, assisted by Moser, his fifth, and Ingram, his first, for a score to five to four at the end of the second. Ingram, huh? 
So even the goalie's getting on the point sheet. All right. Then in the third, uh, Forsberg ties it back up at 5-5 five five with his sixth goal of the season with an assist from Nyquist, his seventh, and Fabro, his second. Then Durzen scores his fifth with an assist from Keller, his eighth, and Cooley, his tenth. That was scored on the power play. Uh, then Nick Bukestad scores the empty netter with an assist from Keller, his ninth, and Hayton, his first. That was on the back end. Preds fall to Arizona, 7-5. Barry and Yossi get the goose egg for me. Yippee Kayan. Um, Saros allows, it looks like all, okay, allows six goals on 24 shots for a 75% save percentage. Yikes. Getting the win for Arizona is Connor Ingram. He stopped 37 of 42 with an 88.1 save percentage. The Nashville Predators are in last place in their division. And if they keep playing like this, they're going to be there for a while. Yeah. Um, Nashville does seem to play better at home. But that's about all I got for that one. All righty. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, division. Uh, it's kind of similar to this, uh, believe it or not. Uh, Dallas leads the division with uh, nine wins, three losses, and one overtime loss. Uh, Colorado is in second place with eight wins, four losses. Winnipeg's in third place with seven wins, five losses, and two overtime losses. Arizona's now in fourth place with seven wins, six losses, and one overtime loss. St. Louis is in Fifth place with six wins, five losses, one overtime loss. They've only played 12 games. Um, as well as Colorado has only played 12 games. There's one other team, and that's the Blackhawks. They've only played 12 games. So um, a couple games in hand for those teams. Um, Minnesota is at 5-7-2 with 12 points with a 42-point uh, win percentage. Uh, the Blackhawks are at 5-7 and seven with 10 points, and Nashville is at 5-9 and nine with 10 points. Nashville is the uh, currently, well, no, the leader in losing streak currently sits as Edmonton. <laughs> Edmonton has dropped four straight. Nashville has dropped three straight. But speaking of, on the flip side of that, of losing games, let's hope it doesn't rub off on this team. We got the Atlanta Gladiators. You always save the best part of your show for last. <laughs> All right. The Atlanta Gladiators took on the Jacksonville Icemen today. Shots on goal in the first period. Atlanta outshoots Jacksonville 11 to 6. In the second period, Jacksonville outshoots Atlanta 17 to 9. In the third period, Jacksonville outshoots Atlanta 10 to 5. And in total, Jacksonville outshoots Atlanta 33 to 25. All right. Scoring in the first was Mitchell Forcier with an assist from Jackson Pearson. Then score that was at the 550 mark. Then scoring at the 1725 mark for Atlanta is Micah Miller with an assist from Reese Vitali and Mitchell Forcier. Then the second period at the 5.06 mark for Atlanta, Reese Vitelli scores, assisted by Jack Mateer. Current Nashville Predators prospect. Yes. Okay. Then in the score, uh, then scoring 37 seconds into the third was Anthony Pizzuli. He's got an assist from Logan Cockrell and Garrett Cockrell. 
Um, then at the uh, 538 mark, uh, Ryan Crawford scores with an assist for Michael Marcheson and Jackson Pearson. Marcheson in the second period beat the holy tar out of Connor Russell. Um, then at the 810 mark, Chris Grando score Grando Grando scores his uh sorry, I read that wrong. <laughs> Chris Grando scores his uh scores for them. That would be the second goal of the game for Jacksonville with an assist from former Milwaukee Admiral Brandon Fortunato and um Mathi uh, Matheson uh, uh Lacapelli. Oof. Try saying that real quick. Um, <laughs> then at the 1957 mark, Michael Miller scores with an assist from Mitchell Fossier and Reese Vitelli. I mean, could only imagine that's an empty net goal. So, uh, game sheet, yes. Give me game sheet. Uh, yes, it was an empty net goal. Uh, the Pizzelli goal was a power play goal, and Fossier's goal was shorthanded. The first goal of the game was shorthanded. Okay. Um, in that for um, Atlanta was uh, Tyler Harmon. He stopped 31 of 33, and uh, Hauser stopped 20 of 24. Hauser's still around. Oof. All righty. Um, your three stars of the game. Third star of the game was uh, uh, Prezelli. Uh, then a uh, second star of the game was Vitelli and Fossier was the first star. Atlanta sets a new team record for most consecutive wins as an organization. Congratulations. That is a lot of hard work to do. Winning several games at the, you know, back to back to back to back to back. Um, is is not easy. All right, final part of our show here um, is in the system. Now, we haven't done this for a couple weeks, so we're going to be able to, you know, we gave them some time. We do it about every two weeks or so. So next time should be right after Thanksgiving or right after, you know, first week of December. So that'll be the next time we do this. So if you don't catch this show and you're wondering where it is, come back to November 11th. It's 11-11. Mm -hmm. Not literally, it's only 10-15. <laughs> 16 now. But anyway, number one on your point sheet for the uh, in, in the system playing for the Chetney Wild, uh, get Graham Sward. Um, he has five goals, 23 assists for 28 points and a plus 18. Um, update on the Wachetney Wild. The Wachetney Wild had Matthew Savo just assigned by Buffalo today as well. So he's going to get a little bit of forward help there too. They're going to have a good team over there. Um, then it is Tanner Mullendike who plays for the Saskatoon Blades of the WHL. He has 14 games played, four goals. 18 assists, 22 points with a plus 14 in six penalty minutes. Austin Roast with an Everett Silvertips, also of the Western Hockey League, nine goals, six assists, 15 points, and a plus three. You know, for a guy drafted as a general unknown by the Nashville Predators and and David Poyle's last pick, he seems to be doing very well. Yeah. He was the only pick of the draft David Poyle made. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Uh, Felix Nelson, he, he has uh, 15 games played for Rogel BK. No points there with minus five. But with Rogel BK, J20 in their junior league, he has eight games played, four goals, seven assists, 11 points, and a plus eight. Uh, Kalen Lind is currently injured in, for the Red Deer Red Devils, or Red Deer Rebels, Rebels, of the Western Hockey League. He has 11 games played, two goals, eight assists, 10 points, minus six. Joseph Willis of the Saginaw Spirit of the Ontario Hockey League. He has 16 games played, two goals, eight assists, 10 points. Matthew Wood for the University of Connecticut out of the NCAA. 11 games played, six goals, three assists, nine points, minus two. Sutter Muzzati. 
He plays for the uh, RIP, which is the uh, Restinler uh, Polytech Institute. Uh, he has eight games played, four goals, five assists, nine points. Um, Aiden Fink for Penn State. Uh, he is uh, 11 games played, three goals, six assists, nine points, plus three. Dennis geared on off. I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> yeah, he's with the Admirals. I'll do that one just for the fun because he's the only Admiral up here. Uh, he has nine games played with nine points. Just going to say that. Um, Alexander Campbell plays for Northeastern University. Seven games played, eight points with minus six. Uh, he has two goals, six assists. Adam Ingram of the St. Cloud University. He has 10 games played, two goals, six assists, eight points plus two. Ryan Nuko of the University of Massachusetts. 10 games played, five assists, two goals, seven points plus four. All right. Then we got Simon Dack of uh, Hockey Club Davos of the National Hockey League. He has 15 games played, one goal, five assists, six points. Uh, Simeon Chichikov of Ovar Garville Mints. He plays in the KHL. He has 20 games played, one goal, five assists, six points plus three. Jack Matier with the Atlanta Gladiators, just because he's not um, seen by us quite a bit. We're going to do the Gladiators real quick here. He has eight games played, three goals, two assists, five points. He did get a point today, so he'd probably put that up to six. Um... Then you have Chase McLean of the Penn State. He has uh, 11 games played, three goals, two assists, five points, five to six. Federal Fontaine, what a mighty, what in a D2 Mighty Ducks name. Um, uh, let's see. We've got Northeastern University, seven games played, two goals, three assists, five points, five to three. Luke Prokop on the, with the Atlanta Gladiators, eight games played, two goals, three assists, for five points and a plus seven. Uh, next, we got Dylan McKinnon of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He has five assists, no goals, with 18 games played and a plus 11. Anton Olison, he plays for, I don't know if he plays for Scalatia in the Swedish Hockey League, and he has one assist, or if he's playing... Over there with Joker, and he's got six games played, two goals, one assist. So I'm not sure there. All right, Jesse Keeskin in one of the most recent Preds draft picks. He has four assists in 19 games. Isaiah Walker for the University of Vermont. He has six games played, two goals, one assist, and a plus five. Ben Strident in the University of North Dakota, formerly the Sioux, the ninth. Nine games played, two goals, one assist for three points and a plus one. Uh, you got Cole O'Hara for the University of Massachusetts with nine games played, one goal, one assist, two points. You have Luke Reed. He has seven games played with one goal, one assist. And so for two points and a plus four, um, Cole O'Hara has a zero on the plus minus uh, there. Um, you have Vladislav Yeramenko. He is injured currently. Eight games played, one assist, plus three. Kasper Kulanumi, 10 games played, one assist, minus one. 18 games played, I'm sorry. 18 games played. Nolan Burke, one game played, no stats. In goal, you have <coughs> Yuha Gakola of the Kalpa of the Liga. He has 10 games played, uh, 3.3 or 3.43 goals against average. With a point eight four six save percentage. Um, then you have Ethan Hayter of the University of Connecticut. He has six games played with a one point six seven goals against average and a point nine three two save percentage. He's two two and one in his this year with the University of Connecticut. Uh, Yuha Gatcola is two five and three. Um, uh, Konstantin Volkov, he has seven games played with Dynamo Moscow in the KHL. He has a 3.57 goals against average with a 0.892 save percentage. He has one shutout, so does Ethan Hader. He is 4-2-0. Troy Grosnick is with the low total poll on it here for the Admirals. He has a, four, uh, according to this, four games played with a 3.28 goals against average with a 0.875 save percentage. With a 1 3 and 0 oh record, it, it should read 2 3 and 0 oh record. Yaroslav Askarov leading the way with five games played, one 
0.60 goals against average with a 0.935 save percentage. Neither one of those goaltenders have a shutout. <sighs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> <I think so. laughs> All righty. So um, next week is the return of NHL news. We'll be talking about a few things there, um, given if there is any. Um, in uh, system news, uh, Samuel Fujimo is back with the Kings and now sent to Ontario. So he's gone. Bye-bye. That's about the most simple thing I got. But thank you all for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker. 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com.